Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. We've got uh, Mr. Muda Yusuf, who is the Director General of uh, Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you very much. Well, yes, yeah. we'll focus on the economy, but there's this um, MBS stats, which was released recently, where they were looking at uh, uh, the... They did say that uh, inflation did drop marginally, but food prices seem to be hitting the roof. And then of more concern is... Uh, I think it was yesterday where the Benue State Governor was quoted to have said he was warning of an impending food crisis as a result of the flood that happened in that area. But even before that time, all of the policies that government has put together, we know they had several committees looking into factors contributing to increasing food prices. But then MBS still came up with that stats and that that was high. So looking through all of those, where, what are we missing? that doesn't seem to be working on getting those prices coming low. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, let me say that we need to understand what the concept of inflation is. Inflation is the rate of increase in prices. Because many times when people hear of a reduction in inflation, they tend to believe or to think that it implies reduction in prices. No. It's a reduction in the rate of increase. So if you have a reduction from maybe 16.1 or 16.2 to 16.05, that means the rate of increase has decreased only marginally. So it increased? But it's, still, it's still increasing. Okay. And when you have inflation anywhere around that threshold, it's something that should be of concern to anybody. Uh, it's even of greater concern from the welfare point of view, which is the point we are trying to underscore. Because the economy is about the people. Yeah. And if economic policies don't take full account of the welfare effect of policy, then you have the kind of social tension that you have. Hmm. Let me pick you up on something because, mm. sorry to jump in, because mm. I remember you were attending one of those meetings uh, that I think the, the VP, VP they, they called, he was present, he was acting present at the time, mm -hmm. they called that meeting, they called stakeholders mm -hmm. to rob minds. So they did appear to demonstrate that intention to ensure that certain things go right by mm -hmm. calling the right people to attend those meetings. Mm -hmm. So what then is not working out? Why is some, some things not working out? Well, uh, there is always a lag normally between policy conception, even, let me even start from the consultation process, yeah. the conception of the policy, the enactment of the policy, the implementation of the policy, before you now begin to see some practical outcomes. Sometimes it can be a very long chain, depending on how effective and how efficient a system is. So that could be a factor. But we need to look at the dimensions of the issue in order to appreciate exactly what the problems are. Yeah. As far as food is concerned, you have major productivity issue. That is the productivity in the agricultural sector. Which we've always had. We've always had it. But uh, it's, it's still, we cannot say that that has gone away. Because the sector is still predominantly driven by the peasant farmers, the smallholder farmers. But the Minister of Agriculture says that we are even overproducing. Well, I don't think so. I, won't add, I cannot agree with that, that we overproduce. I won't agree with that. Because we have a major product. If you speak to an average farmer, they will tell you the challenges they face with farm equipment, machineries, for instance, the challenges of farm clearing. And for the elites that even want to go into farming, the challenges of even land acquisition, the challenges of funding, then the challenges of logistics. Because it's not enough for you to just produce. You need to also connect to the market. Mm. That is also a major challenge. Then you have the challenge of the security problems. Many of the geographical areas where, where a lot of food is being produced, they have one form of security problem or the other. You mentioned Benue. Apart from the natural disaster issue, they had a major security problem in Benue, in the northeast, in the north central. We have the challenges of the, the Fulani Heisman affecting virtually every part of the country. And their main target are villages and farming communities. That is also contributing to the problem. Then there is the external factor. That's a component of the food basket that is also driven by foreign exchange. 
there are some food that we still import. You know? And to the extent that exchange rate had gone up, to the extent that the import duty had not changed, we have a major escalation of prices. So these are some of the issues. Then, of course, even relating to the external factors, the fact that because you have a weak currency, it's an incentive to export. Even when you don't have sufficient food domestically, because the currency is weak, there's a bigger incentive to export because you make more money and exporting exchange. than selling domestically. That is what has happened in the area of grains and things. Some of these exports are even done informally. What do you think happened to that committee set up by the government to try to crash down the prices of uh, uh, food, uh, to crash down food prices? Well, I don't know what happened. We are still waiting to see. The, of course, there was some report they released. I don't know how comprehensive it was. They were talking about roadblocks, yeah. cost of transportation, and so on and so forth. Infrastructure that is Yes. But those things are much more fundamental than that. I mentioned the issue of productivity. We need to address it. Because as we speak, we still don't have sufficient mechanized agriculture. It's not easy to feed a population of our own size.